Today we're going to upgrade the NVMe drive in our Rogue Ally. Let's get to it. The Rogue Ally is kind of a great handheld. It's powerful enough to play Starfield, and versatile enough to play pretty much any game across your entire PC library, emulation included. And while being able to play all these games is great, the Ally only comes with 512 gigs of storage. Keep in mind that it's sharing that drive with the operating system, so you've only got about 400 gigs to actually work with. This means that it's only going to take a couple of new games to fill your Ally up, and emulation only makes the storage situation hurt a little more. My main emulation files take up about 100 gigs of space. That's a lot of games, but the Ally can also play PC games from every store, and I like to keep a few new games installed too. I'm one of those crazy people that still enjoys Fallout 76, and the Ally is a great little device for season play, but that one game alone is 103 gigs. I also play Diablo 4, No Man's Sky, and Dreamlight Valley on and off throughout any given month. And just like that, we're already over 300 gigs of storage. Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield are both upwards of 140 gigs. If I want to install either of those, I have to make some tough choices. Do I get rid of some of my emulated games? Do I stop using the Ally for my frequently played PC games? Modern problems require modern solutions. And thankfully, it's an easy solution, if you don't mind taking things apart. But before you throw your hands up, hear me out. It's actually a lot easier than you might think. The Rogue Ally uses a standard Gen 4 M.2 NVMe drive that's in a 2230 form factor. This means that you can buy a new one off of somewhere like Amazon and replace the one in your Ally as easily as you can replace the drive in your game PC. As a matter of fact, it's even easier than that. Before we start, let's make sure we have the right tools for the job. You're going to need an NVMe drive. For this video, I'm using a 2TB drive that I picked up on sale for about 160 bucks. You're also going to need a small Phillips screwdriver, and I highly recommend having some kind of pry tool. Also, if you're going to use the USB setup route, you'll want to pick up a USB-C thumb drive and maybe a hub that has the ability to connect directly to your home network, just in case you aren't able to use the cloud recovery option. You don't need the hub, but it makes manual installs a lot smoother. I'll add a link to everything that I used here down below in the description. There's six screws on the back that you're going to remove. The back probably isn't going to pop right off, so carefully use that pry tool that I mentioned to help pull the shell apart. Once you're in, disconnect the battery, and then peel off the black sticker that's between the two fans. You only need to peel off one side, but it's easy enough to take the whole thing off. Use the screwdriver to remove the old drive, and then put the new drive in place. Once that's tightened down, put the black sticker back in place. Plug the power supply back in. And finally, reattach the back of the case and tighten it back down. And that's it! From here, it's simply a matter of reinstalling Windows 11, so let's cover a few of those scenarios. When you power the Ally up, it's going to eventually boot into the BIOS. This is where you'll be able to see if it found your new drive, and if you're lucky, you'll even be able to install Windows 11 right from the BIOS. The first thing you're going to want to do is adjust the system date and time. If it's not set correctly, it can cause some weird issues. So go ahead and set that by pressing the little pencil icon to the right of it and entering the current values. Once that's done, we can check to see if you can install Windows 11 right here from the BIOS by using Cloud Recovery. To do this, switch to Advanced Mode, then select the Advanced tab, and select the Cloud Recovery option up top. You'll get a prompt to log into your Wi-Fi network, and from there we'll have a few more buttons to interact with, after which it should download the needed files and kick off a new install of Windows. However, for us, attempting to do this always ended up timing out at the download part. We would eventually get to the point where it started to download files, but it would sit at 0% for about 2 minutes and eventually return an error that simply said Network Error. At this point, we were only able to press the Confirm button, after which the device rebooted back to the BIOS where we had to walk through the whole process from the start. Over the course of about 4 hours, we made just over 50 attempts to use this option. We tried Wi-Fi and wired while in a hub, we tried different networks and different locations. But there are people out there who have been successful here, so give it a try! However, if you find yourself in the same situation as us, simply set up a USB stick to do the work for you. You'll either need a USB-C thumb drive or an adapter for a standard USB-A drive so that the Ally can see it. Connect the thumb drive to your PC or laptop. Head over to Microsoft.com's Windows 11 download page and click on the Download Now button in the Create Windows 11 Installation Media section. Select the thumb drive during setup and kick back for a few while it finishes up. We were using a hub that had a wired connection to our home network, so this step wasn't needed here, but we're going to call it out in case you don't use a wired connection during setup. One last thing that you might want to consider is that you might want to download Rogue Ally Network Drivers and put them in a folder on that thumb drive after you set up the drive as an install drive. Windows isn't going to have the network drivers at the time of install, so once Windows is installed and you get to the desktop, you're going to need a way to get those drivers installed. If you already have them on the thumb drive, then you can simply kick off the installer from there. 
Once this is done, connect this thumb drive to your Ally, turn it on, and it will find the thumb drive and start the Windows 11 install. One last thing to keep in mind, Windows has a device limit, so you might want to head to Microsoft's store device management page and remove devices that you're no longer using. And that's it. Go ahead and reinstall Cyberpunk and Starfield and Baldur's Gate 3 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. You deserve it. And that about wraps things up. Please like this video if you found it useful and subscribe to our channel if you want more content like this. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this and we'll chat again soon.